Terraria provides the player with tons of weapon options, allowing them to customize their loadout or even try class playthroughs only using certain types of weapons. That said, what if we challenged ourselves to do something crazy in a game that's all about combat? How's it going crew? This is Happy Days and today we're going to see if we can beat Terraria without using a single weapon. Now before we get started, we need to clarify the rules for this challenge so we're all on the same page. As the title of this video states, today we're going to try and beat Terraria without using any weapons, so the huge thing we need to do right now is define what a weapon in Terraria is. I'm classing things such as swords, bows, guns, magic and summons and anything else listed on the weapons page of the official Terraria wiki at the time of making this video are off limits. Tools such as pickaxes and hammers are technically not weapons, but I will only be using them for their primary purpose of harvesting resources and not for combat in the spirit of this challenge. NPCs have their own weapons and can't be controlled by the player, and whilst I won't be focusing on them as a main strategy, I will allow them to kill the odd slime or zombie around my base. So this means we'll be relying on items that fall into the wiring, farming and mechanism categories to deal damage such as lava, traps and variety items. Basically, if it's not on the weapons page of the wiki, it's okay to use. Any armor, accessories or buffs can be freely used, although I'll avoid armor set bonuses or buff potions that deal damage such as inferno potions. As always, our goal is complete if we can make it to and defeat the Moon Lord without using a single weapon. If you're trying this challenge on mobile, your final goal could be Ocarim or Golem. This challenge will be quite difficult, so I will be using a few fun and interesting glitches to help us progress through the game. Crafting using any resources I collect during this adventure is allowed, as building boss arenas and mob traps will be a major focus of this challenge. Finally, I'm adding a special rule called the Accidental Damage Clause. Basically, this means if an enemy suddenly appears while I'm underground mining or using bombs like a worm or a critter or a chaos elemental and it gets hurt, that doesn't count as using a weapon as I clearly didn't intend to hurt it. With that said, let's get this crazy challenge started. Once we spawn into our brand new world, the first thing I'll do is take my copper short sword out of my hotbar so I don't accidentally use it. While harvesting trees, I'll be relying on the guide to use his bow to kill slimes as I'll need the gel for torches to begin exploring underground. As each boss fight in this challenge is likely going to be fairly difficult, I'll likely only fight the mandatory bosses for progressing the game. I will definitely need the mechanic NPC, so I'll have to face Skeletron first and the Wall of Flesh to start hard mode. In hard mode, I'll tackle the three mech bosses to spawn Plantera bulbs, Plantera to allow Golem to spawn at a lizard altar, and then Golem to unlock the lunatic cultist and then the moon lord, which will be our final battle. After the guide has killed enough slimes for gel, I can craft some torches and head underground. The first damage dealing item I can get is lava, which requires me to craft a bucket, so our mission is to locate iron or lead ore. As I am completely defenseless at this stage, I need to just charge through, ignoring all the enemies and hoping to find as many chests and loot as possible. I'm likely going to die a bit in these early stages, but as we continue to find life crystals, I'll be able to endure more damage as we explore. Mobility items such as boots, bottle items and a grappling hook will be critical as this will be my best way to both avoid enemies and explore quickly. I only need to grab a single bucket of lava as I intend to use the liquid duplication glitches in the spirit of this engineer type playthrough. Lava can be duplicated using the U-shaped block hammer trick, you just need to wait a few moments to collect the lava each time. The edge of my world was mostly desert, so instead of trying to farm for goblin scouts, I go and smash a shadow orb with bombs so the goblins will spawn naturally. There's not too much I can do about the goblin casters, so I'll just run off screen when too many gather to despawn them. This is also a good time to talk about a major aspect of this challenge and that will be managing spawn rates. Damselfish can be caught in floating lakes and are used to craft calming potions which reduce both enemy spawn rates and reduce the max number of enemies that can appear on screen. Peace candles and sunflowers also reduce monster spawn rates so I'll be carrying them around with me as I explore. I'll also grab some honey from a beehive in the jungle. I only need a single unit of honey because like the lava I can easily duplicate it. Lastly, unlocking the goblin NPC will be critical if we're going to invade the dungeon as Skeletron is immune to lava, so I'm going to need the Tinkerer's Workshop to craft a few boulders. 
Boulders only cost six stone each and are crafted at a tinkerer's workshop so I can make tons of them. While I'm here, I'll also craft some peace candles to help reduce spawn rates as I move around the map. To defeat Skeletron, we're going to be using a technique that gradually releases boulders at the level Skeletron hovers at. If you didn't know, boulders damage bosses just as well as NPCs or your character. To save having to release each boulder manually, I've got a reservoir of lava that slowly burns the platforms the boulders are resting on, triggering them slowly as the fight continues. When Skeletron enters its spinning attack phase, I simply need to grapple onto the boulder platform and Skeletron is destroyed. Thankfully I find the mechanic quite quickly in the dungeon and I try and buy some items but there's too many enemies around. As it's still night time, as soon as the mechanic is off screen she teleports back to base which is great. To get golden keys to loot dungeon chests, I can smash the pots in the dungeon which have a 1 in 40 chance of dropping a golden key. I can also place some lava in flat areas to farm skeletons for a chance for keys too. I'll need to run around to avoid dark casters, but with enough time, I'll get all the keys I need. Before we head down to the underworld to face the wall of flesh, we're going on an early temple raid. If you didn't know, you can access the temple before Plantera is defeated by using a simple trick using platforms. Simply place three platforms near the temple door and hammer them to the angle shown on screen. Then just walk forward holding down and your character will phase through the door. Inside the temple I'll be grabbing all the traps as they're quite powerful for this stage of the game and will put them to good use. I'll be dying a lot here as mobs are very strong but my nearby spawn point will make things a lot easier. A technique that I found useful while looting the traps that helps a lot is placing peace candles as you go and blocking off areas with wood and placing a door high up so the lizardmen can't reach it. Later I find a meteor crash site and quickly mine up some of the ore using sticky bombs to get myself some meteor armor and a ham axe. The meteor heads are quite slow so I can just do big circles around them to keep them away from me. I use a bunch of bombs to make a quick elevator at the edge of my world. The reason for doing this is I want to get to the edge of the underworld where there's no buildings so I have plenty of room to lay down an arena. After setting up a spawn point, I bomb up some ash blocks and start to construct a small runway with a ceiling so most of the mobs can't get me while I work. I use my hammer to rotate the spear and spiky ball traps so that they fire upwards which hopefully will keep me safe during the wall of flesh battle. The reason I'm using ash blocks for my arena is because the wall of flesh is designed to stay above the ash blocks. This means the eyeballs will stay in attack range of the traps most of the time while I'm safely underneath them. The fight goes relatively smoothly and although I take a few hits, we manage to take down the wall of flesh without using any weapons. Now that we're in hard mode, we'll need to start preparing for the mech bosses. I start by building a spawn box and then slowly expand the area by blasting the rocks out with bombs and dynamite. I add traps to the side and lava on top of my spawn box to help attack the enemies that spawn. Finally, once I know the farm is working, I expand my spawn box and add a fishing spot underneath so I can fish while I farm for souls. The massive benefit of this design is once I have the steampunker, I can use a clentaminator to change this area to hello and easily farm for souls of light. For our destroyer battle, I've created a large rectangle arena with the inside of it lined with traps. As the destroyer passes through the large box, it will take damage from all the traps inside. The outer layer of blocks allows me to do laps of the arena whilst blocking most of the probe's laser fire. I will occasionally run into the destroyer's body, but the heart statue we found earlier in our adventure is helping with a little bit of extra regen. It takes a while, but the destroyer eventually falls to the continual trap damage and now we can prepare for the remaining two mech bosses. While I wait for the steampunker to spawn, I make a quick trip to the underworld to collect a hellforge. I can use the hellforge and the titanium ore I got from all the fishing crates to craft a titanium forge. From the steampunker I purchase a jetpack, a clentaminator and some blue solution to turn the corruption farm I showed you earlier into a hallowed one. This will also allow me to collect souls of light I need for the remaining two mech boss summoning items. For the Twins and Skeletron Prime, I need to alter my arena slightly. The Twins tend to stay on either side of the player, so I add a center tunnel to the damage area so I can maximize the time the Twins stay in the damaging traps. Skeletron Prime tends to simply hover over the player, so as long as I occasionally dodge the arms, I can keep the damage on it fairly easily. With the mech bosses defeated, I can upgrade to Hallowed Armor, and as I'm not using any weapons, I go for the melee helmet for the maximum defense score. I also grab an upgraded pickaxe as we prepare to head to the jungle to take out Plantera. After finding a bulb near a reasonably open area, I quickly secure a spawn point and place down a peace candle. Using dynamite, I clear the nearby blocks and slowly expand the arena so enemies can't get inside. It's slow going, but once I get some lava placed at the base of the arena, it blocks the majority of enemies from spawning, which allows me to set up my traps. 
I can use a similar strategy to the mech bosses against Plantera, and because she tends to chase the player directly, I can simply do circles around the damage box to keep the traps on her. In case you're wondering why I'm fighting Plantera as I already have access to the temple, you can't actually spawn Golem until Plantera is defeated in your world, so unfortunately Plantera is a necessary step for us to continue. I'm sure if you've tried wiring before in Terraria, no doubt you've had fun killing Golem with traps. Golem can easily be immobilized with blocks, meaning you can build a trap around Golem's spawn point that it cannot escape from. That said, its head can escape from the trap in its second form, so I still need to move around Golem's chamber to avoid damage, but this is one of the easier fights in this challenge so far. You might think this challenge would get harder towards the end, but I've been saving a special trap method for the last few bosses. Now that the party girl has spawned, I can buy colourful firework rockets from her. If you didn't know, firework rockets are a hard mode mechanism that people usually use for the colourful display they create, but the firework also deals damage. Usually fireworks require a solid object to rest on, but there's a trick to get them to float in the air so they can be stacked. Firstly, I place 12 blocks in a row, followed by 4 teleporters on top, and then the fireworks on top of all of that. When I mine the blocks underneath, the teleporters also fall, but something causes the fireworks to stay in place. I then repeat this pattern about 12 times and wire them all up to a switch. Now I'm sure you wiring experts out there know the exact number of fireworks and rows to take out the coldest in a single hit, but I'm simply going to play it safe by making a backup stack just in case the first stack doesn't kill it. It also seems like fireworks can critical strike, so reforging your accessories to lucky can help if you're using this method. I hover just high enough for the cultists to warp near the top of the stack and the row of blocks above the fireworks ensures they explode exactly where I need them to. With the cultists defeated, we can now focus on the pillars. Defeating the pillars is a tricky two-step process. Firstly, we need to defeat enough enemies to remove the shield from the pillar. To accomplish this, I set up a small arena with lava, spiky ball and spear traps on the edge of the celestial pillars zone. Then I lure mobs back to the arena and let my traps do their work. It's fairly slow going and I'm gonna die a few times, but it works and the main thing is we're doing all this without using any weapons. Once the shield is down, I take an ice rod purchased from the wizard and create some blocks just above the pillar. I need to quickly wire some spiky ball traps up with a timer and then run for it, or die. The trap will slowly destroy the pillar and then it's simply a matter of time before the pillar is defeated. I use a similar method at the next two pillars and repeat the process, but we'll leave the final pillar for now as we must prepare an arena for the Moon Lord before we continue. I'll set up a barrage of firework rockets for each eye using the method I showed you earlier in this video and I'll wire a few backup stacks just in case I need it. Now all we've got to do is take out the final pillar and get ready for our Moon Lord battle. Thankfully the vortex mobs can't phase through blocks, so this pillar is actually going to be one of the easier ones for this challenge. Once the Moon Lord spawns, I need to take out the two hands first. Part of the trick to using this method is to place blocks around the area you want the fireworks to detonate to ensure maximum damage. The other important part of this battle is to have a set of fireworks for each of the Moon Lord's body parts. You'll notice they're set at different heights so they can accurately target the Moon Lord's eyes and core. When the Moon Lord starts exploding, we know we've succeeded. We've beaten Terraria without using a single weapon. This has been one of my favorite challenges so far, and I can't wait to see what you'd all like to see next. Let me know your ideas for our next challenge in the comments below. If you'd like to see me do a challenge for a different game, that's okay too. I can't wait to read your awesome ideas. This video was an absolute blast to make, and if you enjoyed it too, please let me know by smashing that like button and sharing this video. And his most important part as always, you'll stay happy and I'll see you soon. This is Happy Days signing out. See ya!